thank you very much for the introduction. Um, as you can see, I'm from the Central University of Technology and uh, part of the Center for Rapid Prototyping and Manufacturing. And I have the privilege of talking today to you about a very exciting technology um, called 3D printing. And um, we started the center in 1997 at, at, at the CUT and uh, basically it grew um, up to a fully-fledged commercial unit now. As you know, a lot of uh, product uh, development and improvement is done um, internationally. The way we travel, the way we communicate, even the way we prepare food. And as part of product development, additive manufacturing, or what's better known as 3D printing, plays a very important role, not only for producing prototypes, but um, it can produce now um, manufactured components. Um, if you Google uh, 3D printing, you, you will find basically anything from jewelry that's manufactured by 3D printing or even custom design lamps. Um, the world's famous first gun that was 3D printed the other day, I think most of you know about that, as well as architectural, um, architectural um, um, pieces. You will also find things like this, fashion um, for the ladies that like the shoes. I don't know if I will try it on those shoes, but uh, the same with the guitar. Um, um, on the left bottom corner is basically um, a child that was born with quite a bad disease. She couldn't lift her arms and uh, to manufacture for uh, um, prosthetics on, on the outside with elastic cord. So why is 3D printing such an um, attractive alternative um, manufacturing technique? It, uh, you get what they call complexity comes for free and you can manufacture really components, uh, assemblies in, in, in one, one part and then also you have less material wastage. Um, the process itself, uh, the movie is not that working, uh, basically there we go. Um, the process works, you start off with your three-dimensional drawing, you bring it into the machine, it slides very thin layers, and as you can see on the simulation, uh, it's built then layer by layer, and that's where you come to the 3D printing part, or the name 3D printing. A lot of... Uh, Different 3D printing techniques are available, but the one shown here is called laser sintering, and we are using that to manufacture our custom design titanium implants. So, sorry for the slides, but I had to put a few slides in to just make sure everybody is awake after, after lunch, but please, uh, some of them is maybe a little bit sensitive, but technology can do so much more. Um, this lady, uh, Christy Stelz was 16 years old and she had a quite a bad shooting accident and this was an international case study uh, published in 2010 and the doctors had to, um, th this is how she was going around every day, um, so, so she lost both eyes. Then the doctors decided <coughs> 11 years later to start uh, having a look to make for a, a prosthesis, a clip-on face. They used 3D printing to manufacture this, um, this skull and from there they started to make uh, molds uh, uh, as well as also the prosthesis itself. She will never have a fun functionality back but uh, what is important is she, she have a dignity back and she can walk around basically outside. A case study that we did uh, in around 2011 uh, with Slovenia, and this just shows the process chain that is followed. Um, you will see we, we received the, um, the CT and MRI scan data from the radiologist, and that is imported into our software and converted into a three-dimensional part. From there, we can start doing the design work. You could see you mirror the healthy side with the affected side, and you end up with a small piece um, of the uh, defected um, area, and that was manufactured here with us um, here at CUT um, in titanium. 
and it, that was implanted in Slovenia. So, yes, what is happening um, in South Africa now? Um, we had last year a case study with the University of Pretoria. Um, Enika Marque, she was born without a nose. Um, she's one of 40 uh, people in the world, so she had no nasal passages. And the doctors came to us um, to assist with making uh, a 3D model of a skull so they could simulate before the operation exactly where to cut. Her top jaw had to be cut and you know it's very close to the brain. And then from there it had to be lowered um, one millimeter and moved forward three millimeters. It was really a breakthrough operation and uh, because they were able to make for nasal passages. It, uh, this poor child was, was really uh, uh, moved out of the society um, uh, um, before this operation. And you, could s you can just think of, if you don't have um, nasal passages, how do you swallow while you eat? So, so there's many challenges. The operation was really successful, and that's any canal. With a clip on nose, but in society, and then also studying now. These are just the sponsors that, that helped uh, basically this. We also assist um, 3D printing can make, uh, you can use this to ma manufacture external prosthesis, like clip-on ears. There's positioning the uh, devices uh, that the surgeons can make sure exactly where they want to drill, uh, that they don't drill in the, correct, in the uh, incorrect area. Um, you, uh, there's also the possibility of manufacturing uh, patient-specific instrumentation for knee replacements, um, hip replacements, uh, that the doctors exactly, these are drill guides uh, and, and sawing jigs, that they exactly know where to drill and where to cut, but it's patient-specific, so it's not a generic thing. So this is a company in South Africa um, that have the software, that developed the software um, for this. So, okay, so one of our biggest implants up to now um, that we were, you know, cancer is quite a vigorous um, disease. This whole area was removed um, last year. And I, we thought, uh, I, was th I was thinking about putting some of the, um, some of the after operation pictures, but they are quite, not so nice to see. You can just imagine yourself, it's almost like a, the size of the fist that was removed. Um, so she lost her top jaw as well as her nose. And um, yes, we received again the design, Acha the CT scan data. And then from, from there, we started to make a design. Again, uh, this was basically, this is the top design. Um, you could see how, how we basically completed the design. So uh, the bottom side was a drill guide for the doctors just to be able to know exactly where to drill um, into the skull, the positions of the holes. Here you could see inside the machine, uh, it's manufactured out of titanium, a biocompatible material uh, around uh, 0.03 of a millimeter layer thickness. I don't want to go technical but uh, very thin layers and uh, melted on top of each other. So that is the, uh, if you have a look at this 3D model, you could see the extent um, of, of, you understand, what was left. And that was the completed uh, uh, implant with the non this destructive testing components for us to make sure that everything was up to standard. Um, you could see what, what type of um, uh, the time frames we had uh, to complete this. It was quite an emergency case, so it was what happened with her is they tried normal implants. Um, she took a bite on an apple and she broke it out of her cheekbones. So she was in the hospital and uh, connected with her just a feeding tube. So we had two weeks to complete basically this. This is how she's looking now. She have a clip on face. Um, so you could see the area, there was still a little bit of swelling around that area, but uh, yeah, she, she can, uh, she, she, uh, that was done last year, July. So many cases of cancer, uh, uh, maxillofacial, you could see how cancer 
It's basically eating into the bone. And f um, a lot of these are state patients. They don't have medical aids. Um, so what will happen is they will either dissect half the jaw, uh, try it with plates, um, but there's a backlog, I think, of around 100 patients currently waiting for, for that to be done. So again, 3D printing can play a very important role in making this custom. I, I, I believe personally that we won't compete against um, normal hip and knee replacements. This is specific for niche areas um, where, where you need really custom design um, implants. Maybe you saw it on Wednesday evening. Uh, there was operations done in Kimberley Hospital. And this was the case. Um, uh, the patient also, the cancer spread. And it had a size almost of the first growing out. So they had to dissect um, half the jaw. So um, where is all of this going to? Um, uh, the, 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 last, the last slide, I will show you some future applications. Just uh, also interesting project where, where this could play a role is in the development of a polymer heart valve, where this frame would be manufactured out of titanium. The molds will be manufactured by 3D printing. Um, and this is a collaborative study with the University of the Free State. Um, a new Melbourne-made machine is set to create medical history, making human tissue on demand. Eventually, it could produce entire organs, ending the need for transplant waiting lists. Facing death from kidney failure, Vicky Jones waited years for a transplant. I thought I was going to die attached to a machine. But transplant waiting lists may become a thing of the past. Its Melbourne developers believe this machine could one day help manufacture human organs. It's called a bioprinter, but instead of ink, this printer uses human cells to create 3D tissue structures in any design. The cells are laid out precisely, incubated and nourished, allowing them to assemble themselves into fully formed functional tissue. Lay them out in a 3D geometry. After that, biology takes over. Already the bioprinter can produce a five centimetre section of artery in less than an hour. They'll be used in heart bypasses within five years. In time, researchers hope to be turning out teeth, bones, even hearts and livers. When organ manufacture becomes a reality, researchers say the replacements may not look like the originals, but they'll do the same job. And importantly, organ rejection won't be an issue because the patient's own cells are used as the building blocks. For patients like Vicky, the bioprinter represents hope for the future. Just going out there and living life without any restrictions. Dean Felton, 7 New. So, yeah, that is the future. And uh, like uh, shown here on, on this news uh, clip, they already are producing arteries uh, for wild bypass. So with this, I want to end. And, uh, yeah, please have a look on, on, on the internet and follow the this technology, I think it's going real places. Thank you very much.